guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing makeup like a makeup artist. I am delighted to say that this video is in collaboration with Cult Beauty. Me and Cult Beauty have had a love affair for a very long time. I've been a customer for years and years. Uh, my brand Vive launched on Cult Beauty just two weeks after we launched the brand. Cult Beauty and me are just really like that. We're like this. I am just super excited to go through a really in-depth makeup tutorial with loads of my tips and tricks that I've picked up through the years. And I'm going to be creating a makeup on myself that is very in line with how I would do makeup on other people. So I'm going to take a little bit more time than I usually do. I feel like this is a, a classic makeup artist thing. We never give ourselves the same amount of time that we would give someone else. I've got a bunch of my favourite products from Cult Beauty. Cult Beauty definitely have the best range of brands. Not just saying that because of these on there. They've just got the most exciting brands, super cult brands, and every one of these products I'm just really excited to share. And I'm also delighted to say that I've got a discount code as well. So if you use CBJamie20, you will get 20% off all orders over £40. There are some finer details, I'll pop them in the description bar, but I think we should just get started. So my first big thing that I'm going to talk about is prep. We would always prep skin in a pretty intense way. Good skin prep is the key to good makeup. 100%. So we're going to start off with a splash of toner. This is the Fresh Rose Deep Hydration Facial Toner. Love it. I've been talking about this so much lately. You can see it's got beautiful rose petals inside. Very decadent, but it also works. Rose is really good for calming down the skin, hydrating the skin. And it's such a good first step to get some moisture into your skin before you do the rest of your skincare. So I'm just going to bring that up touch it everywhere. It's the first good step to making sure you don't have any dry patches on your skin. If you put foundation straight on bare skin and you're suffering from some dryness around blemishes or just dryness in general, you're going to see that through your foundation. On the other side of the spectrum, if you have oily skin and you don't properly hydrate your skin before your makeup application, what your skin's going to do is it's going to overproduce oil because it feels dry. Actually, it's dry. Very confusing, but it makes sense. Next step, hyaluronic acid. Change the game. I talk about loads of different hyaluronic acids. I've got a pretty inexpensive one here today. I know I talk about loads, but this is the Inky List Hyaluronic Acid. Really great starter hyaluronic acid. If you've not tried it, really affordable. And I'm just gonna take a little bit in my hands. Again, warm the product up, and then we're gonna apply the same way, just pat. If you've not tried patting your skincare on instead of rubbing your face, try it. I used to be a real face rubber, but I just think this is such a lovely, gentle way to wake your skin up before your makeup. I mean, technically you should be going right in there, but I'm not the best at that. Okay, next, I'm gonna prime, but I'm also going to hydrate my skin in one step. I'm gonna use the Vive Skin Nova, love it. This is such a brilliant hydrator slash primer. I do use it in place of my moisturizer quite a lot, and it's gonna give your skin a beautiful glow. You can see it's got a really, really subtle golden tint to it. As soon as you blend it in, even on the fairest of skin, it just, blends seamlessly and then on deeper skin because it has that warmth to it it's never going to make deeper skin look ashy what you're going to be left with is beautifully glowy hydrated skin but not greasy and not slidey one of the main concerns for me with primer is when it pills so that was at the top of my list i didn't I, this could not pill it can't pill because that's just a flipping nightmare so i'm just rubbing that in you can see skin is juicy it is radiant it is buoyant it is plump and it's going to give you all day hydration. So underneath your makeup, your skin is just healthy, glowing, thriving. Next step, SPF. I'm kind of more talking about makeup on yourself for every day here. I'm not talking about shoot makeup, but I'm not really talking about makeup where you would not use an SPF. This is the Thank You Farmer Sun Project Water Sun Cream, beautiful SPF, SPF 50. The way that I test sunscreen on myself is is how it sits underneath makeup as a makeup wearer. I just want my sunscreen to be almost invisible on the skin. I want it to give nothing but good benefits. I don't want it to be ashy. I don't want it to leave a cast. I don't want it to be too greasy or oily or even too chalky and dry. This one has a really beautiful balance of hydration but not slippy or greasy. And as soon as you start massaging that into the skin, it just disappears, which is super important. We're prepped. What a difference. It just makes your skin bing, glow. Okay, on to makeup. My kind of second tip 
or my second stage of this video is all about a super polished base and I would say the kind of overall rule for this part is less is more so I used to use way more foundation than this I've stripped it right back and it looks way nicer. Same with concealer. Used to use tons of concealer. I just don't need it and probably neither do you. Powder, I used to powder my whole face once upon a time. Now I literally just powder exactly where I need and let the rest of my skin glow. You'll see, let's go right into it. So I'm gonna start with one of my favorite foundations. I have this foundation for myself and also in my kit. This is the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation. Holy Grail. I'm going to use the colour Stromboli today. I've got a little bit of a tan on my face. And then the brushes I'm going to use are all Katie Jane Hughes Spectrum Collection. I just thought this was really nice and easy. The brushes are brilliant. If you are in the market for a new brush set, I highly recommend. It's a really great price point. You've got pretty much everything you need as well. So we're going to use these brushes today. And I'm going to start with the 03 brush, which is kind of like a stippling brush. I'm going to take a little bit of my foundation off the back of my hand. I'm going to start buffing that into the skin. And what you're going to be able to see is a little bit of like freckles and stuff coming through. So this is a, I would say it's like a medium covered foundation. Obviously you can kind of make your foundation whatever you want by mixing it or building it up. But I'm going to wear it as a medium coverage foundation today. So we're still going to do a pretty glam makeup. But look at that. Seamless. Less is more. Take your time. Pick it up a little bit of product. I've got two pumps in the back of my hand. I wouldn't even need it all, honestly. And I'm just taking my time to really buff that into the skin. And I know from Katie Jane Hughes, when she talks about her brushes, she made them to be very, very soft. So there is no over blending and you really can't, you can't go in too hard with these because they are, if you see, they're very, um, I was gonna say bendy, but that's not the right word, is it? Malleable, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm just buffing that in. It's actually a great match, this foundation for me right now. So it's gonna be perfected skin. It's not gonna look like we've got loads of foundation on, but we still want it to be quite glam. This would be a really nice event makeup for what I'm doing. Great for a wedding or a party. I think I sound so old when I talk about, you know, when you go out to the nightclubs, it might be quite nice. So I'm using a mirror that's quite far away at the moment. I'm gonna get a smaller mirror and just hold it right up close to me so I can see exactly what I'm doing. And another great tip, if you can't get ready in front, like obviously I've got loads of lights and stuff going on. If you can't get ready in front of loads of lights, try getting ready in front of a window just so you can really see what your makeup's looking like. Me and Jack were recently away on holiday and our room uh, was beautiful, but it was quite dark. And I'm so glad I took one of my lights with me because, you know, when you do your makeup in somewhat darkness, when you go outside, it can be a bit of a shock. I'm just bringing a little bit of that foundation onto my ear and down my neck as well. I'm just building up a nice sheer layers. It's always easier to add rather than take away. I always focus the most coverage in the very center of my face. We're gonna move on to concealer. I'm gonna use the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Concealer. Such a great concealer for good coverage, but it's very hydrating. So it's not too thick. It's not gonna settle into any dry areas. I think the formula's got a really nice stretch to it as well. So you'll see, I'm gonna apply a little bit in here, a little bit over there, like right under my eye. And at the edge of my eye, you can see that I've got a bit of discoloration here. So I'm really targeting where I'm putting that concealer, targeting the dark areas, and then I've got some blemishes on my chin at the moment. I got a little bit of the mask knee. So I'm just gonna do little dots over my blemishes. I love to add just a little bit of light and fuller coverage on my forehead and down my nose. It's not really like highlighting with concealer, but it is just adding that little bit of just perfected skin exactly where you want it. So I'm having a look, see anybody else? Sometimes I like the corner of my mouth here here and the color i'm using in this is 3w so nice and warm then i'm going to go in with the kgh brush in 08 and i'm just going to start blending that in and then over the blemishes instead of like buffing away i'm just going to tap and it honestly just blends itself see when you're using nice soft brushes like this it does make it nice and easy another reason that using less product can be better is that it, there's less to move around. So you may find if you just reduce the amount of foundation and concealer and everything that you're wearing, you may find that your foundation is lasting longer. It's looking great for longer. And you've got less creasing, like there's just less to move around. There we go, just buffing that out under my eye. You can see I've got that nice brightness now. So I would say my def definitely my pro problem, I don't really think it's a, I don't think it's a huge issue, but under my eyes is where I like to focus concealer and coverage, say you've got redness, you might want to focus more on the cheeks. If you feel like you have more blemishes, you might want to focus over the blemishes. So it really does depend on what matters to you with your makeup. Look at that, we've got a lovely glow. Skin looks pretty perfected. There's no huge discoloration anywhere. There's no product overload. Looking great. 
Next, we're gonna do a little bit of cream and powder bronze. I have the Say Medium Bronze in the Sun Melt. This is just a really lovely cream bronzer. It's quite new to me, but I really like it. I think this brand's really exciting actually. This is what I mean about cult having great brands. This is one of them. If you were going for just a really nice everyday makeup, then you can just use this. But I'm going for that glam makeup, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna go in with the 05 brush and I'm just gonna go straight in. This is a cream product, so it's lovely. It's not too shiny, if that makes sense. To see if you look how much product I'm getting, it's not a huge amount. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna stipple on. This is a perfect colour for me for a natural bronze. It's really beautiful, really, really cool formula. I'm buffing like into the centre of my face and up, but never down. So we're keeping that cheek nice and lifted. And then I'm gonna do the same thing just around my head. I'm just picking up the product and then dusting that over my forehead. So if you like a natural bronze, this is great. I'm gonna go under my chin a little bit, down my neck. Wee touch under my nose and at the sides. Happy with that. I think that's looking really, really nice. Nice and glowy, if glowy skin's for you. It's lovely, you see how it's got the shine a little bit? Very model-esque. The product, not my face. This is gonna act like a really nice first dimension of our bronzer. We're gonna set it with the Vive Modern Bronzer. This is just, well, I feel like a bit of a wally talking about my own products and raving about them, but just hear me out, okay? Very, very finely milled pigments, builds up beautifully on both dewy skin, and skin with nothing on it. It works really great on no makeup days. It works great as a full glam. You have two shades in there, so you've got, I'm using the shade medium. I've got medium one, I've got medium two. Medium one's great for an all over bronze. Medium two is fantastic for adding a sculpt to your bronze. But if you've got a tan like me, what I would do is I would just literally go between them and then you get a really beautiful amount of product for my brush. I'm gonna dip into both at the same time, tap off a little bit on my hand, and we're gonna start at the back and we're just gonna add a little bit more depth to this bronzer. What will happen is because this is powder, it's just gonna set that area of our face. So I'm going for quite a bronzed look today because it is my favorite. Even though it's going to be winter soon. I'm going right at the back. Mixing those two shades together to customize my color. So it's perfect because I'm a wee bit more tan than I usually am underneath the nose. And this just adds brilliant dimension to your face, but really naturally, nothing too crazy. And again, I'm keeping it super high. I'm almost hitting my cheekbone and my temple at the back. And that just, again, helps with the whole lifting sculpting scenario. That is my favorite cheek I've done in a really long time. Now I'm gonna use blush. I'm gonna use a powder blush. I'm gonna use the Vive Sunset Blush in the shade Pesca. Looks quite light here. I mean, maybe if I turn it that way. Beautiful peachy blush. This is, I'll say it right now, it's our best seller. Everyone is obsessed with Pesca. And I'm gonna use the 05 brush again, and I'm gonna tap in to the blush, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna pat that right on top of our bronzer, just right above it, I should say, not on top. And we're not coming too far in, we're keeping it nice and high, and we're keeping it right at the sides of our face, again, helping with the lift and the sculpt. So I'm adding quite a lot of blush because I can, and I love it. Again, the formula of these is really creamy. It's a powder that technically is matte, but it's got very subtle shimmer to it that makes it look like a cream blush on your skin. So it really is the best of both. You've got the staying power of a powder blush, but you've got the beautiful finish and the luminosity of a cream blush. Two birds, one stone. There we go. So it's quite a subtle blush today. And I'm gonna pop a wee bit over my nose as well. Really useful. Ties in our complexion. Okay. So I'm thinking we're looking nice, we're looking very natural, very sculpted, very bronzed, very blushed. I'm gonna go in with powder now because you can see that I'm a bit oily here and I'm a bit oily here. This is gonna change the game. So Laura Mercier, Translucent Loose, setting powder in the shade Honey. So this has a really subtle honey tone to it. Really lovely and brightening on medium, sallow, olive, tan skins and deep skins as well. So I'm gonna take the 04 brush. I'm gonna get a little bit of that powder and I'm just gonna start like a tiny bit. I'm not baking, I'm not loading my skin up with powder and leaving it there. I'm literally working the powder into my skin so it's seamless from the get-go. Once I've kind of gone over my skin one time with the powder, I start like a pat and then I start buffing it in back and forth. So it takes away any excess shine but it still leaves your skin nice and glowy, which is just perfect. So you do not need much of this at all. And I actually, I quite like leaving just here, oh, where am I? Here free of powder and then my cheeks as well. I'm gonna leave them nice and glowy and we're gonna do highlight at the very end. 
I get quite oily around my nose, so I'm applying a bit more powder there. And then I would say that that is great. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my base before I do my eyes. I've got the Urban Decay All Night Out Setting Spray. I'm gonna really spray my face down so the powder looks like it's really not done its job. Just wait. It's waiting game. This is a good, this is a good time to chill out. Just a few minutes to yourself. What we're gonna do is once the setting spray has dried, we're gonna go in with another little bit of powder. And by doing it in those layers, you're ensuring your base is going nowhere, but it's still gonna look very fresh and natural. Again, two birds, one stone. While we wait for that to dry, my eyebrows are just my usual. I put my cabrow, my gimme brow, and my 24 hour brow setter on. The last thing that I do at this step is I always do my little freckle. If you haven't tried enhancing your freckles, after your base makeup. It's really nice. I think it makes your base look really fresh and natural. I use the Benefit Roller Liner in the shade Brown. It's just really great. It's got a felt tip, just like so, and then I always kind of like pat it, and it just looks really natural. You can even go so far to enhance other ones, but you can see the ones on my cheek. They're actually quite pronounced anyway, because I've not used that much foundation. So let's zoom you in and do our eyeballs. And you can see my skin. So super natural looking skin. You know, it's not too much with the bronze, it's not too much with the blush. Like everything's looking really nice. The key to a good smoky eye, we're gonna do quite intense eyes today, is the way that you layer product. So for example, I would ne I would never, and I can say this from my chest, I would never do eyeshadow without priming my eyes first. I think that you can if you want. Of course, there are no rules when it comes to makeup, but if I had to have a rule, it would be to prime. It makes your eyeshadows last longer on your lids. It stops creasing. It makes them look more pigmented. If that's what you want, a really strong look, you need to prime your eyes first. Otherwise, you're just setting your eyeballs up for a fail, in my humble opinion. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna use my Vive Eye Wands in the shades Sand, Mahogany, and Raven. These have changed the game. Uh, as far as priming your eyes in a really efficient way that enhances your makeup. We're also gonna be using the new Vive Muse eye palette. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to blank out my whole lid. Can you see how oily my eyes are? Naturally, if I was to put on eyeshadow without a primer, everything would move everywhere. So we're going to primer our eyes first. I'm going to take sand, which is so great as a base colour. I'm just going to pack that on. I'm going to do a nice even layer. And these are really pigmented, nice and matte, but they're not thick and they're not sticky. And you don't, honestly, you can chuck these on and use your fingers to blend them out if you want. You can use a brush. You can wear them alone or with eyeshadow on top. They are just really versatile and they'll work whatever way that you like to wear makeup. So once I've got that on, I'm just gonna blend that out with the KGH number 10 brush. And this is gonna be the perfect base for whatever we do next. And I'm blending that right out and into my foundation. And that's what, oh, my eyebrow. And that is what's gonna give us a really nice seamless I look. And what you can do is if you've got really oily eyes like me, you can let it just chill on your lid for a second and then if you get any creasing while the product's setting, you can just pat that out and once you've done that one time or two times if you've got super oily eyes like me, then it won't go anywhere. If you think you're quite slow at doing makeup and you need a little bit extra time, I recommend doing one eye at a time with the eye ones, just so it doesn't set while you're busy blending. Now we've got that on and we're all primed, I'm actually gonna go straight in with mahogany and I'm gonna go in the outer corners of my eye. So I'm gonna just start here and bring that up towards the lid. You can see it's a totally rough shape. And then I'm gonna get a smaller eyeshadow brush. This is the number 11 brush. And I'm just gonna go back and forth and blend that in. And that is gonna start the depth for our smoky eye. I just love it. If you've got green eyes like me, you will really love this color of eye wand, mahogany and the Muse palette. There we go. So you can, can, you can see I'm starting to go up in shape. I'm not bringing it rounded. I want to do a really pulled out, almost like a cat eye today, but with eyeshadow. And if you wanted to create an eye look with just eye wands, then what you could do is work away you know, say I was happy, I was finished, I was done with this and I just liked it like this. Get a little bit of loose powder and just buff it on top and then that will completely set your look. So we have got such a great base now for the rest of our makeup and it's gonna intensify the makeup. It's gonna make it look really beautiful and give great depth and it's gonna last all day. Okay, let's go in with the palette. I want to kind of warm this up a little bit. So I'm gonna go in with the shade Merlot just here and we're gonna add that on top of where we put Mahogany Eye Wand. So I'm taking the 19 brush and I'm just gonna start building that up slowly. And I'm using almost tiny little circular movements to buff that into where we put the eye wand. 
and get a really beautiful blend. So I love to bring my eyeshadow quite far out. I just feel like it gives my eyes a really beautiful open look. I think it gives me that almond shaped eye, which is my favorite look on myself. But you can do this on a much smaller scale if big blown out eyeshadow is just a wee bit too much or if you don't feel like it suits you. But I guarantee it does, I guarantee it does. And I'm bringing that again down onto the lid and right over so you can see you've got this nice diagonal shape happening. It's almost like a triangle right out. And I'm bringing it slightly onto the crease in the outer corner, you can see, but not in this inner part. To add to this shape, I'm going to go in with mahogany eye wand underneath my eye, but just to the centre of my eye. So just halfway along. So that still leaves the inside really open, really fresh. And then I'm going to go in with a smaller brush. This is the 13 brush in the same shade from the palette, Merlot. And I'm just going to buff that. And that's going to give us a really lovely smoky outer corner. Oh yeah. Now I actually just love that the way it is. I think it looks really cool. It's almost a little bit avant-garde just because of the colour we've used and how smoked out it is. But I'm going to add a little bit of shimmer to the inner corner. Again, this is going to really brighten up her eyes. And for me, I've spoken about this before, my eyes, and I only know this because I stare at my own face all the time. My eyes are quite close together and I like my eyes to sit slightly further apart. So I'm going to go in with the shade Divine from the palette and just a little classic eyeshadow brush. This is the 15 brush and I'm gonna pat that on my inner corner only. And this is a really gorgeous pinky champagne that just works beautifully to do exactly that. I'm actually gonna stick to the mattes from now on. So I'm gonna go in with the shade Peony, which is just a really beautiful light peony shade. It's very, very soft. And I'm gonna use that to set this inner part of my eye and add a bit of brightness as well. I'm going in with the number seven brush just to really mattify. There's so many ways to do your eye makeup like a makeup artist, but this is all about just how, how we're setting in certain areas, how we're adding light and dark, how we're layering our products, and it's all about just how long the makeup will last. To add a tiny bit of depth to the outer corner, what I'm going to do is go in with Raven Eye Wand, and I'm going to smudge it out instantly with a little brush. This is the 12 brush, and I'll show you how this is going to work. So this just to add to the the winged out eye look. So I've drawn on a little bit of Raven. I'm going to go in with my little brush and just blend that into a soft, smoky wing before the eye one sets. And you can see the difference. It's just added that wee bit more depth. And whenever I'm doing any kind of wings, I uh, make sure to keep my eye open when I can. Then I close to blend and then I open to make sure that it's nice and straight or it's going in the direction that I want it to. This is a really good tip for anyone with hooded eyes. If you want to tone it in, to the, the tones, you want to turn it into the tones on the lid. I'm going to go in with the same little brush and the shade Velvet from the palette, which is the dark purple. And I'm going to use that shade just to blend it out and really tie in the look. So it looks like it's covering up the black. These shadows are really pigmented, but actually it's just going to really help everything blend together. Nice. I am going to keep it pretty natural from here. I'm going to add my mascara. Biggest tip with mascara, use a mascara that's going to last long and not smudge. My go-to is the Urban Decay Lash Freak Mascara. It's just so good. You can get really nice chunky lashes with it, which is my favourite. I like a big chunky lash. Or you can just use a little bit and get a nice natural lash. So I'm just going to take my time to really build my lashes up. I'm just going to look down into my little blush compact and really coat every lash because I'm not going to wear falsies today. I just want nice, natural, chunky lashes. And then I'm going to do the same thing to my bottom lashes. I love so much mascara. So this is a personal preference thing. If you don't like your lashes to be quite as thick or long, then don't use as much mascara. I suppose that reinforces there are no rules when it comes to makeup. It's what you like. These are just little tips that might help if you want them. While we're here, I really do like the way that my makeup's looking. I love the eyes, but I want to add a little bit like more colour. So I'm going to go back in with the number 19 brush in the shade Love from the palette. So this is just a really beautiful warm pink. And I'm going to tap into that and I'm just going to slightly blow out this makeup a bit more. I just, I love the way it looks. I'm just bringing my brush up. Adding sometimes just an extra shade to help blend can really enhance the look. And if you're struggling to blend, if you've gone with, in with quite a dark colour and you're feeling like it's a bit patchy, using a warmer colour 
it's a little touch lighter and doing this exact step will just make everything look much smoother and then worst case scenario a classic trick if you're struggling to blend your eyeshadows is to add shimmer it will make anything look smooth it will make anything look blended matte eyeshadows are definitely the harder option but when you get them right i just think they look so good happy with that let's zoom you out and draw the lips Okay, so for lips, to keep in theme with the natural skin, we've definitely gone more natural today, which is actually a good point. If you would like me to do something like this, but a full coverage glam, then let me know. What I'm gonna do with my lips is I'm just gonna naturally define my lips so they look like my lips, but better. So I'm gonna start with my little towel. This comes with the, the brush kit, the KGH brush kit. I'm gonna use a little bit of my fresh toner, actually. Just a tiny touch on this towel. Uh, I quite like to cover my lips up with foundation when I'm doing my eye makeup so it doesn't distract me because my lips are quite pink. But actually, we're gonna really go with that today. So not only are my lips like free of product, but they've also just had a little exfoliation, which is quite nice. And we're gonna start with a little bit of lip balm. So I have here the Charlotte's Magic Lip Oil. Such a nice lip balm. Really great for in your handbag, your drawer, everyday makeup. It's just great. I'm gonna take a little bit of lip balm and I'm just gonna apply to the center of my lip. Then we're gonna go in with a lip definer to define our lips, but we're gonna leave the center our natural lip color. This is a really nice way of having a natural lip look that suits you because your natural lip color, of course, suits you. It's what you have naturally. But I'm gonna use the Vive Modern Lip Definer in Brat and I'm just gonna slightly overdraw my lips in certain places. So I'm gonna start at the cupid's bow. And I'm going to draw up to on the other side. And I'm just going to follow my natural lip line on the lip, <laughs> the lower lip I nearly said, on the bottom lip. And I am going to slightly colour in the body of my lip as well, just so it all matches. So the key to this is using a lip liner that's similar colour to your lip shade. Definitely not lighter, but you can afford to go a little bit darker. And I'm just overdrawing my cupid's bow in the centre of my top lip a little bit. And then what you can do is just add a little bit more of your lip balm or lip oil. And I'm gonna get my finger and I'm just gonna take that lip oil up onto the new lip line that I've drawn myself. And what you're gonna be left with is a very natural looking overdrawn lip. Look at that. It's just glassy and she's lovely. So that's technically, that's like us finished apart from highlight. I'm gonna take a little bit of the Vive Skin Do and I'm gonna grab that, put it on the base of my thumb. These are like the makeup blenders that you're born with. And then I'm gonna just pat that gently on my cheek and then I just use the back of my hand to blend it which doesn't have any product on and our cheeks were already really nice and glowy from all the prep and the the products that we've used but this just adds that little bit extra and then see if you've got your shoulders out look just put the excess on your shoulder oh, okay you guys that is the finished look I hope you love it. I think it's so beautiful. I love the eye shape and all the little techniques that are in this routine are techniques you can use with any makeup look, really. I love the way that the skin looks. It just looks like natural skin, but you really can't see any of my blemishes, although I should have covered that mosquito bite on my neck, but I didn't. I hope you really, really enjoyed. Let me know if you like videos like this. I can do more. We can do more in depth. Maybe we do a supernatural one and then a super, super glam one, because this is like a happy medium. This is the makeup that I would just wear every day, honestly. I will link all the products down below as well as all the details on my Cult Beauty discount code, which I'm excited for. All the products that I've used uh, in today's tutorial, you can use my code on. Other than that, thank you so much Cult Beauty for sponsoring this video and working with me again. Thank you so much for watching as always and supporting me. Other than that, I'll see you in the next video. Bye! I feel like I'm talking so much in this video, but I hope you don't mind. I, have, I swear I've got dog hair all over my face. <laughs> I'm out of breath. <laughs> I'm running up the stairs. Look at this freaking hurt, bro. That hurt. I used to be a <laughs> <laughs> One of the main, uh, what do you call it? One of the main, <laughs> mind blank. Fighting winter off with a bat. And then hitting my cheeks with that hit. Hitting that cheek. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna. <laughs>